We're going to do some general equilibrium analysis uh, to consumer exchange economy where consumers have Cobb-Douglas utility functions. So here's the setup. Consumer 1's utility equals x times y. Consumer 1 has an initial endowment of 3 units of good x and 2 units of good y. The subscript 1 just represents consumer 1. Consumer 2 has the same utility function. Consumer 2 has a slightly different endowment. Consumer 2 has 1 unit of x and 6 units of good y. So we want to find the um, um, in equilibrium, uh, how many units of good x and good y do each consumer uh, does each consumer consume? So the first thing I want to do, uh, since we're dealing with Cobb-Douglas utility functions, and this will help simplify the the problem, is that we can normalize the exponents on the Cobb-Douglas utility functions to sum to one. So the way you do that in general, say we got this utility function good x is raised to the power a, good y raised to the power of b. We want to normalize exponents to sum to 1. You're going to just do the following calculation. It's going to be x raised to a divided by a plus b. y is going to be raised to b divided by a plus b. Why do we do that? Because the a divided by a plus b will equal the share of income spent on good x. Okay, this is a nice property of Cobb-Douglas utility functions. And then b divided by a plus b will represent the share of income spent on good y. So doing that for consumer 1, we're going to normalize the exponents to sum the 1. So, you know, just following that rule on the last slide, it's going to be 1 divided by 1 plus 1, or just 1 half, okay? And then for the y term, the exponent, you're going to have, what is b? b is 1, and it's going to be divided by a plus b, where a is 1, so it's also 1 half. So again, just following that rule. So notice exponents sum the 1. And again, reminding us uh, consumer 1's initial endowment. So what can we do with that information? We know that consumer will spend half his or her income on good X and half his or her income on good Y. So in other words, the price of good X times the units of good X uh, represents uh, the spending on good X. And because of this property, the consumer will spend half their income on good X. So it's going to be 0.5 times M. Okay, so the amount of spending on good X will equal half the consumer's income, where M represents the consumer's income. So just uh, dividing through by the price of good X here, uh, we have basically the demand for good X. Um, so let me just go to the next step right here. What is consumer income? The consumer's income is going to be the amount of good X that the consumer currently has times the price of good X, what it could be sold for. Okay, so this is the, the three is the initial endowment times the price of good X. The consumer's income will also equal the number of units of Y that the consumer has times the price of good Y. So for M, we have this now in parentheses, the, just the initial endowments multiplied by their respective prices added together. Uh, we're going to normalize a price of good X to equal 1. So where I see a price of good X, I'm just going to plug in 1. So price of good X is 1, price of good X is 1. Simplifying, we have consumer 1's demand for good X, 1.5 plus the price of good Y. Let's do a similar thing now for consumer, consumer 1's demand for good Y. Uh, the consumer will spend half her income, okay, then the, the exponent on y here is one half. The consumer will spend half her income on good y. So the expenditures on y will equal 0.5 times m, dividing through by the price of good y. And then once again, making the substitution for what is the consumer's income. Uh, the initial endowment of x multiplied by the price of x plus the initial endowment of y times the price of y. And just simplifying here, multiplying this 0.5 through by parentheses, we have consumer 1's demand for good Y. 
We're going to do the exact same thing for consumer two. Uh, since consumer two has the same utility function, we will normal a, a same Co a Cobb Douglas utility function, and in fact, it is the same. We'll just go through and normalize the exponents to sum the one. So half the expenditures or half the the expenditures or half the consumer's income will be on good X, the other half on good Y. So basically, following the same steps here. Uh, here, can the consumer's income, once again, will be the consumer's initial endowment of good X times the price of X plus the initial endowment of Y times the price of Y. So these initial endowment amounts are different than consumer 1. Normalizing the price of good X to equal 1 and making that substitution, we have consumer 2's demand for good X right here. Doing the same thing for... The, uh, the, the good Y for consumer two, making our substitutions for income and then simplifying, we have consumer two's demand for good Y. Consumer one and consumer two's demand for good X. What we want to do is we're going to add up uh, to get an aggregate demand or total demand. So we're going to add consumer 1's demand plus consumer 2's demand together. So I'm just making the substitutions here for x subscript 1 and x subscript 2. Simplifying, we have the total demand for good x equals 2 plus 4 times the price of good y. The next step is we're just going to basically set the total demand equal to the total endowment of good x. The total endowment of good X uh, was 4. Consumer 1, let me go back at the beginning here, sorry. Uh, consumer 1 had 3 units of X. Consumer 2 had 1 unit of X, so our total endowment of X is 4. Okay, so setting the total demand for good X equal to our total endowment for good X, and then solving for the price of good Y, we get the price of good Y of 0.5. The next step is to take this price of good Y and plug it into all the consumer's demand equations. So for consumer 1, we plug in the price of good Y at 0.5. Consumer 1 will consume 2 units of X. We plug 0.5 in con into consumer 2's demand for good X, consume 2, likewise we'll consume 2 units of good X. And then finally we take our individual demands for good Y and we evaluate them at a price of good Y equal to 0.5 and we get the following results. So we get our equilibrium uh, um, um, condition here. Alright, I hope you found this video helpful.